Do you sleep next to your phone? Yeah, I sleep next to my phone. Do you always carry your phone? Yes. <laughs> Over the last 24 hours, I've used my phone for an average of four hours and 19 minutes. The first thing I do when I wake up is I check my notifications. I'm not addicted to my phone. I am not addicted to my phone. I'm not addicted to my phone. I would say as far as teaching, um, sometimes, you know, kids being on their phone just takes away from our time as teachers teaching because we have to go over and, and address it. Um, and students that spend too much time on their phones end up, you know, missing out on things, whether it's in class or even if it's outside of school and they're um, spending a ton of time on their phones and not much time on their schoolwork that can negatively, you know, impact the tests as well. I think that phones have created a distraction in the class, most definitely. So we know from research um, that there's been some significantly increased rates of depression and anxiety for um, not just young adults, but also for um, people kind of across the lifespan with regard to social media. And that has to do with um, the feeling of anxiety for constantly checking, make sure you're not missing something, not wanting to miss any notifications to know what's going on. Um, but then also that depression kind of arises where people are comparing themselves to other people since on social media we tend to portray ourselves in the best light and so people feeling like they don't measure up or aren't adequate when they compare themselves to everyone else so probably over the last decade or so that's really led to sort of an increase in mental health issues. My thoughts about the young adults ever increasing use of social media today is that it's creating some unrealistic expectations for the future. They are lacking interpersonal communication skills they anticipate immediate gratification and responses from most sources like Instagram, texting, Snapchat, and in reality, it doesn't happen that often and I feel like it causes a lot of anxiety. I feel like it causes a lot of what about me or me too, or it causes individuals to covet what other people have because they're seeing all this unrealistic posts out there of really what's not real life, but they feel like they are missing out. And so they always want to have or up, up, one up somebody. I don't think they should be allowed in the classroom at all. Obviously, that's why I went to my strict no phone policy. Really, there's no reason for them in classroom. We have Chromebooks and I feel that they just distract students from what they should be working on. Um, in the school at all, probably I would prefer students being social, but I guess they could be allowed in the school but not in the classroom. Um, I don't think that they should necessarily not be allowed, um, but I think there, that it would help if there was a consistent um, policy where the expectation was that they're not out during class. Um, I know some schools don't even allow kids to have phones on them um, and like on them in the halls or in lunch or uh, you know things like that and I, I think I don't know how I feel about that um, but I think being able to have a phone but just the expectation is during class time that it's, it's put away um, and that includes when you leave class to go to the bathroom you know I always see kids wandering the halls to go to the bathroom and they're not going to use the bathroom, they're using that as time to be on their phone. Um, so I think I agree with, you know, during class time not having phones out, um, but not necessarily not allowing them at all inside the school. I'm not sure what percent I would put on students. It's, it's probably pretty high, um, but if I'm honest, I think it's probably high for people other than students too. Um, and I think sometimes it, it can go in cycles. I know there's certain times where I spend way too much time on my phone. Um, and I think sometimes it's a way for people to avoid doing other things that they should be doing instead. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the students and you know everyone really probably spends more time on their phone than they, than they should. Um, 
I think students have a harder time breaking from it though. Um, you know, you use the word addiction, um, and it's it's probably a little bit you know harder for students to you know come to the realization that they're spending too much time on it, and maybe knowing what to do um, to avoid being on it all the time. I know um, there's times that I recognize it's a distraction for me if I'm home grading stuff and I have my phone sitting there. There's times where I'll take I'll take my phone and put it in the other room um, and put it on the charger so it's out of out of my sight um, and allows me to stay more focused too. Um, I don't know how many students you know have the have the skills to kind of make that um, decision for some self control. I think that in on average in a class there are five to seven students who are severely addicted and can't get through the class without looking at their phone. I don't think it's the majority, but often those five to seven are the ones who really should be focusing on their schoolwork. So my recommendations would be um, to put away the phone. So when you're in school, maybe keep it in your locker or in your car where it's not accessible to you. Um, at night, keep your phone somewhere other than your room. I think a lot of people use their phones as an alarm clock, um, but I would recommend getting an actual alarm clock and having your phone in a completely different room so that you're not tempted to check notifications in the middle of the night. Um, and also because the light from the screen of your phone really disrupts your sleep. So. Um, kind of keeping those separate. I think um, at dinner time when your family's eating dinner, make sure the phone is away from you um, where it's not within reach um, and just sort of train yourself to be able to function uh, without the phone. Yeah, I changed what I'm doing this year with my phone. So I've got a holder in the back of the room and every student has their own slot. Um, and they've got two options. They can keep their phone um, in the holder um, in their pocket or they can leave it in their backpack. Um, and if I see a phone out during class, I just write a referral for it. Um, and I thought I was gonna get more pushback at the beginning of the year on it, but so far things have gone well. Um, you know, I've written a handful of referrals, but for the most part, kids have um, been able to, you know, have some self-control with it. Um, and so that's gone well this year. And it has taken some stress off me with having to deal with phones and you know, I felt like in years past I spent way too much time worrying about phones um, and now the expectation is clear and consistent um, and it's, it's pretty cut and dry. There's no, I don't have to keep track of how many warnings I gave certain kids. It's just, it needs to be put away or in the holder, otherwise it's a referral um, and then that seems to have gone well so far. So this year I have implemented a strict no phone policy. Phones must be stored in my storage bag or in their backpacks. Um, the reason I did this is because I realized that if it's available to a student, they have very little self-control and it's just difficult for them not to look at it. So I tell them I did this because I care. I want them to be successful.